Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today I'm finally able to share with you some of the books that I read towards the end of 2022. I was doing a good job of putting out a video like this at least once a month or once every other month for a while there when I was reading like crazy. I didn't get to read much at all during December, but I wanted to go ahead and catch you guys up on what I thought of all of these books. Now, Mad Honey, you guys probably are most familiar with because I've been talking about it all of January, saying that I needed to finish it by the end of January but I actually did not finish it. So I did make it 62 pages into Mad Honey. So far, I think it's pretty good. What I like about Jodi Picoult's writing is that she really does a lot of research into the stuff that she's writing about. Like obviously it has bees in it, and so she's very knowledgeable about what it takes to be a beekeeper, at least as far as I know, she's very knowledgeable about it. She really makes it feel like you're right there with the character while they're being a beekeeper. Now, of course, obviously the book is not just about bees. It's about the beekeeper's son and girlfriend dying. And as of right now, they still have not determined whether or not it was accident because she fell down the stairs or whether or not there was foul play. But just based on the insert that was read when I did the unboxing for this one, and you can go click up there and go watch it if you want to. It came from Once Upon a Book Club box. Just based on that insert, it does look like there is going to be foul play, and they're trying to pin it on her son, but I don't know whether or not her son did it or not. I didn't get a chance to finish it. Once the January ended, I told you guys that I was going to put it aside, and I really wanted to get to my Harry Potter books, which currently I'm on Prisoner of Azkaban, so I'm on the third book, moving through them pretty quickly but they are middle grade books, so they're pretty easy to read through. The next book that I did read officially was My Fine Fellow, A Delicious Entanglement. There's romance in it, but it's not everything that the book is about. It's set in the 1800s, I think. Yeah, 1830s England. And it's about culinarians, which I guess were typically women back in the 1830s. This one, there's two different culinarians who are in it and Maybe I'll read the inserts of the ones that I have finished. Plus it'll give me a refresher because it has been a while since I've read some of these books. In 1830s England, culinarians who create gorgeous food and confections for the elite are the creme de la creme of high society. Helena Higgins, top of her class at the Royal Academy, has a sharp demeanor and an even sharper palate. No stardom awaits her if she can produce greatness in her final year. Penelope Pickering is going to prove the value of non-European cuisine to all England. Her contemporaries may scorn her Filipina heritage and her dishes, but with her flawless social graces and culinary talents, Penelope is set to prove them wrong. And then there is Elijah Little. Has nothing to his name, but a truly excellent instinct for flavors. London merchants won't allow a Jewish boy to own a shop, so he hawks his pastries for a shilling a piece to passerbyers. But he knows with training he can break into the highest Eklon of society. When Penelope and Helena meet Elijah, a golden opportunity arises to pull off a project never seen before and turn Elijah from a street vendor to a gentleman chef. But Elijah's transformation will have a greater impact on this trio than they originally realized, and mayhem, unseemly faux pas, and a little romance will be a part of the delicious recipe. And it does have a little romance. I mean, it's kind of like a budding romance, and it's not the focus of the book, though. Really, the focus of the book is about food. And then there is some prejudice that's in here. There's Helena, who's very brass, very not ladylike, but still ladylike. She just gets whatever she wants, and her parents just, they just give her whatever she wants. She wanted to be a culinarian. They like built her this huge kitchen. That way their servants could still cook their stuff, and she has her own space where she can keep creating. She's really good at it, but really her parents pay all their attention to her brother, which kind of goes along with the times, and it's even mentioned in this book, Anatomy that I guess the heir, whenever the parents die, like all the money and the fortune would go to the brother. So they just dedicate, the parents dedicate all of their time and attention to the brother and not the sister. She's really good friends with Penelope and Penelope is really the only one who can stand to be around Helena, but she's always been really nice to her. Never really cared or acted like she cared about Penelope's heritage, which Penelope is part Filipino, but her skin is pale white. So people who didn't know about her parents wouldn't know. In fact, her parents don't even live in the London area and won't show their faces because they don't want her to be disgraced or they don't want it to become a scandal about her heritage, which I guess was still really big back in those times. 
And then there's Elijah Little, who has his own difficulties with being Jewish. And like most way through the book, they didn't even realize he was Jewish until he had to cook a pork dish and it tasted awful because obviously he couldn't taste it. There's that kind of dynamic going on in the book. And of course, there are some feuds and some fights that break out between all of the tensions. But really, I thought it was a pretty good book. I did think that some of the areas where it was talking about the cooking and the food kind of dragged on a little too much. I remember thinking to myself, can this part just be over? Like it was almost too detailed in some areas. I really wish that there was a visual that I could see, like, like I could actually see the foods that he was creating. Like I would love to see this turned into a movie just so I could get the visual effects of it. But overall, really enjoyed this book. I love reading about food. I love reading about baking, like that kind of stuff. So I enjoyed it. And I think this came in an unplugged book box. I don't remember which one. The next book, Anatomy, A Love Story. Let's read the insert for this one. A gothic tale full of mystery and romance. Hazel Sinnott is a lady who wants to be a surgeon more than she wants to marry. Jack Kerr is a resurrection man who's just trying to survive in a city where it's too easy to die. When the two of them have a chance encounter outside the Royal Edinburgh Society, Hazel thinks nothing of it at first, but after she gets kicked out of a renowned surgeon, Dr. Beecham's lectures for being the wrong gender, she realizes that her new acquaintance might be more helpful than she thought because Hazel has made a deal with Dr. Beecham. If she can pass the medical examination on her own, he will allow her to continue her medical career without official lessons, though Hazel will need more than just her books. She'll need corpses to study. Luckily, she made the acquaintance of someone who digs them up for a living. But Jack has his own problems. Strange men have been skulking around cemeteries. His friends are disappearing off the streets and the dreaded Roman fever, which wiped out thousands a few years ago, is back with a vengeance. Nobody important cares until Hazel. Now Hazel and Jack must work together and uncover secrets buried not just in unmarked graves, but a very heart of Edinburgh society. This book, I think it was on Reese Witherspoon's book club. It actually was not my favorite. I hate to say it because like I want to like every single book. There were parts of this book that I actually really loved and got into. I found it very intriguing that again we have a book set I think in the 1800s. You have a girl who wants to do something other than just get married which is pretty much all they wanted to do with women back in the 1800s right? Like that was our life goal to get married off. Like that was what the parents, the moms, and the dads like that was their main focus marry off their daughters to the right person in society and like that's just their life. Well she was kind of sort of engaged to I think their cousin because you know that's how things were back then and he even knew who she was as far as someone who really liked surgery but most people you know when they hear of a girl doing that they think it's odd. You know someone who wants to cut someone open or you know what I'm talking about. He was okay with it but at the same time he was basically telling her like, you need to get it out of your system now because once we marry, like there's not gonna be any of that. You need to just fall into your wifely duties. And then of course she was really rebellious against that. And here we have the same kind of situation. Hazel's older brother passed, which means that the fortune is gonna get passed on to her younger brother because women get skipped back then. And basically it's the same kind of thing that was going on here. Parents put all of their love and attention and focus onto the child who was going to become the heir. Obviously because like I guess if they if the child didn't feel like they were treated right they could turn out their own parents even after the fortune passes especially like the mother. But it's just sad the way that it was back then. There were some good parts of this book. I don't want to say it's not worth reading. There was a little bit of a mystery brewing too and it really towards the end of the book the mystery really starts showing its hand of what the mystery is and all these people who've gone missing. It really doesn't touch much on it. It does touch on it a little bit, but it doesn't touch much on it. And then you have a similar situation in this book as you had to this one. You had a beautiful girl who was in high society and then a kind of know-nothing boy who didn't have anything really to offer. But the book did turn out differently in this one than it did in this one. I don't know. It just was not my favorite. It wasn't my favorite. I wouldn't call it even a true 
romance book. And I think that's where it threw me off because it's supposed to be anatomy of love story, but really the only love story that is in here, like the true love story, is the love that Hazel had with anatomy. I'm gonna move on, talk about this book, The Lost Ticket by Freya Sampson. This is a romance book, like a typical modern day romance book, one that you would expect. It's a very warm, very uplifting, very sweet novel. So definitely recommend this one. I actually read this one really quickly in like a day or two. Let me read the back of it for you. When Libby Nichols arrives in London, brokenhearted with her life in tatters, the first person she meets on the bus is elderly Frank. He tells her about the time in 1962 that he met a girl on the number 88 bus. With beautiful red hair just like hers, they made plans for a date at the National Gallery Art Museum. But Frank lost the bus ticket with the number on it. For the past 60 years, he's ridden the same bus trying to find her, but with no luck. Libby is inspired to action, and with the help of an unlikely companion, she papers the bus routes with posters advertising their search. Libby begins to open her guarded heart to new friendships and a budding romance as her tightly controlled world expands. But with Frank's dementia progressing quickly, their chance of finding the girl from the 88 bus is slipping away. More than anything, Libby wants Frank to see his last love one more time, but their quest also shows Libby just how important it is to embrace her own chances for happiness before it's too late in a beautifully uplifting novel about how a shared common experience among strangers can transform lives in the most marvelous ways. And that's exactly what the book is about. You have Libby who is just coming out of a breakup and having to move back in with her sister and having to deal with all of those feelings. And she's trying to fill her time with something because she worked with her long-term boyfriend. Like they lived together and worked at his company. And so when the relationship ended, the job kind of ended. So she finds herself back in London, back with her sister, kind of like starting over with her life. And she fills up some of the time with watching her nephew and then also, you know, riding around London, just trying to see the sights. And she meets a stranger on the bus. And when I first read the back insert for this book, I thought that's such an odd thing to write a book about, but really, you know what, it worked. It was a good little book. I will say that there's some really funny moments, there's some warm, loving moments, and then there's a little bit of some heartbreaking moments in here. It really had a well-rounded story, and it surprised me. It surprised me with how much I liked it. Actually, this item right here is one of the items that came in this Once Upon a Book Club box. They did a really good job with the gifts that time, and I don't know if it was just because I had already read the book by the time I did the unboxing, so I was already felt connected to the items that they did, but really, I was impressed. It was a great story. The last book I'm gonna share with you guys, The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. Lovers of true crime will get a kick out of the thriller that oozes atmosphere. This one is a mystery novel, maybe even a mystery thriller. Um, and it also has some spooky kind of haunting ghost things as well. Let's read the insert for this one. Some crimes come back to haunt you. A true crime blogger gets more than she bargained for while interviewing the woman acquitted of two cold case slayings in this chilling new novel from the New York Times best-selling author of The Sundown Motel. In 1977, Claire Lake, Oregon, was shaken by the Lady Killer murders. Two men seemingly randomly were murdered by the same gun with strange notes left behind. Beth Greer was the perfect suspect, a rich, eccentric 23-year-old woman seen fleeing one of the crime scenes, but she was acquitted and she retreated to the isolation of her mansion. Oregon, 2017. Shay Collins is a receptionist, but by night, she runs a true crime website, The Book of Cold Cases, a passion fueled by the attempted abduction she escaped as a child. When she meets Beth by chance, Shay asks her for an interview. To Shay's surprise, Beth says yes. They meet regularly at Beth's mansion, though Shay is never comfortable there. Items move when she's not looking, and she could swear she see the girl outside the window. The allure of learning the truth about the case with the smart, charming Beth is too much to resist. But even as they grow closer, Shay senses something isn't right. Is she making friends with the manipulative murderer 
Or are there other dangers lurking in the darkness at the Greer house? It was a really good mystery. I didn't mind the aspect of like the ghosts or the haunting or the um, supernatural parts that were in it. It's not the entire focus of the book. The biggest focus of it is like a true crime novel. As it states, you have Beth, who is the one who was charged with the murders, but then acquitted. And then you have Shay Collins, who is a true crime blogger. She was even able to get an in with the police officer who worked way back in 1977 to get his perspective and what he thought. They did a really good job of putting it together. You really feel like you're moving along with the story as if you're trying to also solve the case while they're solving it. I really enjoyed the way it was written and the way it all came together. I recommend it for mystery thriller type lovers who don't mind a little supernatural ghost stuff here and there, you know? That was my review for these four books. And then like my little mini saying of Mad Honey, I really didn't have much to say about it because I haven't read that far into it. I won't be able to get back to it though until after I have finished the Harry Potter books. Let me know your thoughts of the four books that I reviewed and the partly review that I did on Mad Honey. Would you be interested in reading any of them? I will have links to all of these books down in the description box below in case you're curious and you wanna go buy one. Please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll be back soon with more videos. Bye everyone.